Hello everyone! Para sa video na to, magsasolve tayo ng problem involving optimization. Here's our problem. A delivery company wants to come up with a package box that has a square base and a volume of 40 cubic feet. The question is what should be the dimensions of the box with the least amount of material to be used? Para maumpisahan natin itong problem na to, let us first visualize ano ba yung meron tayo. Let us have this box here. Ang sabi, yung base dapat ay square. Ibig sabihin, yung dimensions ng sides, yung measurement nila dapat pare-pareho. In that case, hayaan natin yun as the variable x. Pareho to dito at saka dito since our base is a square. Tapos yung height is still unknown. Kaya hayaan muna natin siya as y. So now, let us have our volume here. Meron tayong volume na 40 cubic feet. Kaso ang formula ng volume of a box of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. In our case, dun sa base, kung titignan natin, let us have our volume sa context ng problem, ang base natin is dalawang x. So we have x times x, so we have x squared, tapos the height we have y. So the volume is equal to x squared times y. Kaso ano yung volume natin? That is, it should be 40 cubic feet. Kaya we have 40 is equal to x squared and then y. So iwan muna natin to as is kasi wala pa tayo magagawa. Dalawa pa yung unknown kaya hindi pa natin siya masasolve. Ngayon, punta naman tayo dun sa amount of material na gagamitin. Meron tayong anim dalawa sa taas, saka meron tayong apat sa paligid na sides. Kaya ang gagawin natin, we will be solving for its surface area. Ano yung area natin? We have A. This is equal to, let's start with the base. Meron tayong square sa baba at sa taas. Kaya ang mangyayari, para makuha yung surface area, yung area nito, dalawang beses nung side times side. So we have x squared. Meron tayong dalawa na x squared dun sa taas at sa baba. And then meron tayong apat sa gilid. So we have x here sa side, tapos meron tayong y sa height. Kaya yung isang side na to, that is just equal to yung area niya is x times y. Kaso meron tayong apat sa paligid, kaya to complete the surface area of the box, we have plus apat na products nung x and y na nasa gilid. So you have a is equal to 2x squared plus 4xy. So ngayon, meron din tayong problema Kasi hindi pa natin siya makukuha na ng derivative para makapag-apply tayo ng concepts ng optimization kasi meron pa tayong dalawang variables involved. Dito na natin gagamitin yung equation na to. Kaya ang gagawin, we have to solve for the value of y in terms of x para yung nasa right side ng equation na to is just in terms of x, makukuha na natin siya ng derivative. So working here, dito muna tayo kay 40 is equal to x squared y. Solving for the value of y, we multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over x squared. Para y na lang yung matitira. So we have the value of y, pagpalitin si left side at si right side, that is equal to 40 on the numerator over x squared on the denominator. With this, pwede na nating ipalit yung y dito sa y in terms of area. Kaya ang gagawin natin, we just substitute, ipapalit natin yung 40 over x squared kay y dito. We have the value of area. That is equal to 2x squared plus 4x. Tapos yung y ay magiging 40 over x squared. Then we can perform our division. We have x divided by x squared. Makabuhasan ng isa. So this will become 1 over x. Tapos we just multiply yung nasa numerator. We have the value of our area. That is now equal to 2x squared plus 4 times 40 is 160, and then this is over x. Kaya ang gagawin na natin, 160 times x raised to negative 1. Kasi this will become 1 over x. Ang negative exponent form niya, that is x raised to negative 1. Nilipat ko na to into this form para kapag kumuha tayo ng derivative, mas madali nang gumamit ng power rule. Now, let us continue with our solution for optimization kuhanin natin yung derivative nitong area. Getting its derivative ng buong equation with respect to x, we have a prime here is equal to, power rule, ibababa yung 2, we have 2 times 2 is 4, and then babawasan ng isang exponent, so we have x. Tapos, ang mangyayari dito, babawasan mo ng isa to, ibababa yung negative 1, 
So, negative 1 times 160, you have negative 160. Kaya, ang gagawin na natin dito, minus 160. Tapos, dahil binawasan to ng isa, we have x raised to negative 2. Ngayon, nakuha na natin yung derivative nung area with respect to x. Now, para makuha natin yung local or relative maximum or minimum, we have to equate, gagawin natin 0 yung derivative. Kasi the slope of the tangent line, given a relative or local maximum or minimum is equal to 0. Kaya ang gagawin lang, check here, yung a prime, gagawin lang natin siyang 0. So we have 4x minus 160 over x squared. Ayusin na natin to. This is in the form 160 over x raised to negative 2. This is over x squared. Tapos yung a prime, the derivative, gagawin natin 0. Then we solve for the value of x. Para hindi tayo mahirapan, ilipat natin itong 160 over x squared sa kabila. So this will become 4x is equal to, from negative, this will become positive 160 over x squared. And then para matanggal natin yung nasa denominator, let us multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. Now we have 4x times x squared, that is 4x cubed. Tapos sa mangyayari, as we multiply 160 over x squared by x squared, madidivide to, kaya ang matitira na lang sa kabila is just 160. Now we only have to solve for the value of x. Para magawa yun, tanggalin muna natin si 4. So let us divide both sides of the equation by 4. Kaya ang mangyayari, as we perform our division, this will become 1. We have x cubed here is equal to 160 over 4 is just equal to 40. Then solving for the value of x, Dahil meron tayo exponent na 3, kuhanin natin yung cube root ng both sides of the equation. So let me use another color para hindi tayo malito, getting the cube root ng left side tsaka right side ng equation. Kaya mawawala na to, what will be left is just x here dito sa left side. So we have x is equal to the cube root of 40. Kapag nag-round off tayo to two decimal places, that is equal to 3.42. Now we have the value of our x. Tapos, as I have said earlier, kapag ka equate natin yung derivative as 0, ginawa natin siyang 0, we either get the local, minimum, or maximum. Kaso ang kailangan natin is the least amount. Kaya kailangan pa nating i-check whether yun know, compute natin na value ng x if this is the maximum or the minimum. Kaya pwede pa tayong gumamit ng second derivative test. So, paano gawin yun? Let us remember, x is equal to 3.42. Gagamitin natin ito mamaya. Akit tayo. So, doing the second derivative test, galing tayo sa first derivative, a prime, kuhanin natin yung pangalawang derivative niya. Let us get its derivative one more time. So, we have a double prime. Ang derivative ng 4x, derivative ng x is just 1. So, this is 4 minus Applying power rule, ibababa si negative 2. So you have negative 2 times negative 160. Kaya gawin na natin positive 320. Tapos bawasan ng isa yung exponent. So you have x raised to negative 3. So on other notation, we have a double prime. That is equal to 4. Plus, ibababa ko lang yung x raised to negative 3. You have 320 over x cubed. Ang gagawin natin ngayon to verify, titignan natin yung na-compute na value na x using the first derivative. That is 3.42, ipapalit natin siya dito sa x. Kapag ka nakakuha tayo dito sa second derivative, if we substitute x here ng value that is a negative number, then ang nakuha natin is a local maximum. Pero kapag ka ang nakuha naman natin is positive number, kapag ka gumamit tayo ng second derivative, then ang nakuha natin is a local or, or relative minimum. Yun ang kailangan natin for this problem. Kaya ayun ang gagawin natin, we have a double prime, tapos ipapalit natin yung x that is 3.42. Kaya this will become equal to 4 plus 320 all over, palitan yung x ng 3.42, this is 3.42 and then cube. Kapag pinindot to sa calculator, we have a double prime of 3.42, this is equal to, if we round it off, we have 12. Kaya dahil nakakuha tayo ng positive number dito sa ating second derivative test, then yung na-compute natin na value ng x that is 3.42, this is the local or relative minimum. So with that, na-confirm na natin na itong 3.42, the value of x is the minimum, 
Ngayon, gamitin na natin siya to get the value of y para matapos natin yung dimension of the box. So, akit tayo. So, ang gagamitin na lang natin is eto. Yung y is equal to 40 over x squared. Now, solving for that, we have the value of y that is equal to 40 over. As we remember, ang x na na-compute natin is 3.42 and then squared. And then, this is just equal to, using our calculator, this is also 3.42. In our case, yung base natin, pareho silang 3.42. Tapos, yung height, yung y, it is also 3.42. Kaya para makakuha tayo, then arriving at a volume of 40 cubic feet, ang kailangan pala nating box is a cube. Pare-pareho yung value ng length, ng width, tsaka ng height. In our case, that is 3.42. With this, the dimensions of the box that will use the least amount of material para makabuo ng 40 cubic feet ng volume is our final answer. We have 3.42. So let me write it down. 3.42, the length by 3.42 the width by 3.42 na height. So, this is all in feet. So, we have 3.42 feet. Lagay ko na lang dito. And then, pare-pareho sila. Now, we were able to use our concept of derivative optimization para makuha yung pinapahanap ng ating problem that is the least amount, the minimum amount of material na gagamitin para makabuo tayo ng isang box with a specific capacity ng volume. So this is it for this example. I hope that you have learned something. Thank you for watching.